Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be ranting about the Uncharted Iceberg. And if you don't know what this is, it's basically details from the most well known to the most obscure ones as we go deeper into the iceberg. And before I start, here's the iceberg image for you guys to pick which tier you want to see first. And if I missed any details, comment them down below as it helps me get some feedback from you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Wow! Let's start with tier 1, Discovery. Relics. In all the Uncharted games or the mainline games, there are relics to be found. And they can be found in Chapter 5 for Uncharted Drake's Fortune. And the same chapter for Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. In Chapter 4 for Uncharted 3 Drake's Inception. In Chapter 15 for Golden Abyss. And in different chapters for Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. In the trilogy, these are precursor eggs from Jack and Daxter, which is also made by Naughty Dog. And then for Uncharted 4, they include the strange fruit or the Wamba fruit from the Crash Bandicoot series, the pendant from The Last of Us, and the egg from the Jack and Daxter series. By collecting these in their respective games, this gives you a trophy relic finder. Subway Sony and Subway had an advertising plan during the era of the PS3. So many of the exclusives had a promotion for Subway and one of these exclusive games was Uncharted 3 to exception. They made a whole ad with no note to promote Subway, which is infamous in the community for being so pointless and weird. Not only that, we had to go to Subway to play all the Uncharted maps in the PS3 multiplayer. So this was just bad. Uncharted 3! Get your coat on 30 ounce drinks today! Subway, we're winners eat. Now! Sigparus Magna. Sigparus Magna is the code told by Sir Francis Drake, which Uncharted uses heavily in their games. This translates to greatness from small beginnings and has also been engraved on the ring which Nate was in the trilogy. Sigparus Magna? Greatness from small beginnings. It was his motto. Brutal. Brutal is a difficulty which was been featured in the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection as a new inclusion, and as the name suggests, it's brutal at a point which breaks the whole game and the entire health system. So it hasn't been in any of the Uncharted game ever since. Looks like we missed our chance. Amy Hennig. Amy Hennig was a creator and director for the trilogy, but left the Naughty Dog Studios after she was working on Uncharted 4 story for a while. The reason for her leaving the studio is still uncertain. Lost Legacy. 
Lost Legacy is the latest game for Uncharted, and it follows Chloe and Nadine, yes, the villain from Uncharted 4, and also Sam in like one hour before the finale. But to be honest, this game is pretty good, and I would say it's pretty underrated. Normal Life A Normal Life is the fourth chapter in the Uncharted 4, The Thief's End, and it's basically exploring Nate's home. Looking at all the artifacts and treasures from the previous adventures, aka the trilogy. We can see Nate playing Crash Bandicoot, looking at himself in the mirror, and eat, which is definitely the highlight of this. Of course. I love this chapter, as until this game we had never had a chance to explore all the previous conquests and just be mesmerized without something just blowing up every single second. A bandicoot. Looks like a fox. Last of Us In Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, there's an easter egg to The Last of Us, which can be found on a newspaper, on the counter, in the chapter, another round. The newspaper reads that, and I quote, scientists are still struggling to find deadly fungus disease. But this was actually a mistake from the developers who thought The Last of Us would release before Uncharted 3. And they left it in, but when they released it, the easter egg was forgotten about. I guess you could call this a happy accident. NDI NDI, which stands for Naughty Dog Industries, is branded for many things in the Uncharted universe. Starting with the gun holster which Nate wears is NDI branded and most of you know this as you always see the back of his gun holster while playing. It is also the name of the grenade which is used, MKNDI. It's the sticker found in the first chapter of Uncharted 3 and also it's the brand of the shirt which Flynn wears in the first chapter of Uncharted 2. The names of the containers in the ship chapters of Uncharted 3 are also NDI branded. In real life, this brand is fictitious. Marco Polo Marco Polo is an improvised joke by Noel North and Claudia Black, where in Uncharted 2, when they jumped into the pool on a top of a hotel in Nepal, no not said Marco and Claudia got into the fun by resisting to say Polo as Chloe. Naughty Dog then made this into a trophy called Marco Polo. This became somewhat of a staple in the Uncharted series ever since. It can be seen in Chapter 14 in Uncharted 3, the exception. which gives you the trophy Marco Solo. In Uncharted 4, A Thief's Hand, the game can be played in Chapter 12, Near an Abandoned Ship, in turn giving you the trophy The Return of Marco Polo. Marco. Marco what? And can be also seen in Lost Legacy, where Chloe laughs when Nadine mentions In Chapter 5, giving you the trophy, Marco Pono. Multiplayer So, Naughty Dog in 5th June 2019 had announced that they are shutting down the PS3 multiplayer servers for Draw 2, 3 and Last of Us by September 3rd, 2019. Even if The Last of Us has the PS4 multiplayer left, the Uncharted trilogy doesn't. Crap Crap is the most said word by No Not, and I've always felt that No Not just says it rather than it being in the script for Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, but ever since Uncharted 3, it's kind of been Nate's catchphrase.
baseball shirt. This is a shirt worn by Nathan Drake in the 2006 E3 premiere of Uncharted Drake's Fortune, but this isn't present in the campaign of Uncharted 1, but can be unlocked by a cheat code in the PS3. Left, right, down, up, triangle, R1, L1, and square will give you this costume. In Ayafindra, Nate wears this shirt for the entirety. In Among Thieves, this baseball shirt can be unlocked in the multiplayer when the Siege expansion pack is bought. Before, it was exclusive to the European limited edition of Among Thieves. In Uncharted 3, this can't be unlocked in the single player, but can be seen worn by young Nate in Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. The baseball shirt can be seen and unlocked in Uncharted 3 multiplayer, but it was exclusive to the Subway campaign, as I previously mentioned. The shirt was also worn by young Sam in Uncharted 4 Thieves' Hand. Clowns Nate revealed in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves that he has Clownophobia, if I'm pronouncing it right, which uh, is the fear of clowns. And ever since uh, the end of Uncharted 2, uh, this has somewhat been of a running gag in the series. An eight. An eight? You were a total eight. An eight? Those guardian things were an eight. Are you kidding me? Yeah, those were terrifying. Well, what's a ten? Clowns. Let's move on to tier two. Uncovered. Golden Abyss Golden Abyss is the prequel to Uncharted Drake's Fortune, which was made by Sony Ben Studios for the PS Vita. Originally, Sony came to Naughty Dog, but as they were working on Uncharted 3 and The Last of Us, they were unavailable. So Sony went to Sony Ben Studios, and they agreed, and this was admittedly their biggest project then. So, they wanted to do this game right and the fan service. So, they made this game story with close proximity to Naughty Dog. When the game was released as a PS Vita launch title, it quickly became underrated as a PS Vita launch was a tremendous fail, thus making this game the most underrated in the franchise. And not only that, as it was a PS Vita exclusive and launch title, Ben put a lot of gimmicks, so kind of aging it not that well. For what it's worth, I don't think Sony would remaster Golden Abyss. But I don't know, let's see. Sam was going to be villain. Sam was supposed to be the villain for Uncharted 4 The Thief Sam. In the starting half, he would be like a friend, uh, but when the rave twist, which is still there in the game, would come around, he will switch sides. The story was made by Amy Hennig right before she left, but as Neil Druckmann and Bruce Staley wanted creative control for Uncharted 4 Thieves' Hand, they changed Sam from a foe to a friend. The twist is still there, but aftermath is different. Movie The Uncharted movie has had a long and winding road to completion, with the first announcement coming all the way back in 2008. Mark Wahlberg was attached to the project since 2010 to play Nathan Drake. Over the last 10 years, the movie has gone through seven directors, including David O. Russell, Seth Gordon, and Travis Knight. Ruben Fleischer, best known for 2009's Zombieland and the superhero movie Venom was confirmed to take over the project and after two trailers and an extended scene, the movie is finally official. Dude Raider Dude Raider was the name given to Uncharted Drake's fortune by the fans of Tomb Raider not long after the showcase in E3 2006. But after the game was released, this has somewhat been of a joke in the Uncharted community. (laughs) 
Jack 4. Uncharted Rick's fortune was supposed to be Jack 4 in development, but the Naughty Dog employees thought that it would be a disservice to the fans as they wanted a more realistic turn rather than a cartoony feel. Cutter Charlie Cutter was supposed to be for the entire game of Uncharted 3 to exception, but the voice actor for Carter had to star in the Peter Jackson's Hobbit. So in the release game, Carter was cut, pun unintended, by hurting his leg by falling down a building in Chapter 8. And surprisingly, Chloe also was cut from the game. Early dog. Shit. Shit. No. No! Hurry! Charlie! Oh, shit! Bollocks! Don't move! Don't move! Jesus, my leg! Cassie. Cassie is the daughter of Nathan Drake and Elena Fisher, who was supposed to be a son from Amy Hennig's story, but was changed to a girl by Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann. Cassie was named after Cassandra Morgan, who is Nate's biological mother. Last of Us Uncharted Universes Fans from the start of the Easter egg in Uncharted 3, which I mentioned, have theorized whether Uncharted and The Last of Us happen in the same universe. But in The Last of Us, there are Easter eggs for making Uncharted a game in their universe as it was released before the pandemic in the game happened. And basically, the same type of Easter eggs can be seen in The Last of Us Part 2. I'll get to these Easter eggs later. So, I seriously don't know whether these two coexist or they're the same universe. Motion Controls As Uncharted Drake's Fortune was released in 2007, which was a year later than the PS3 officially launched, the people on Oida had a bright idea to put pointless gimmicks into the game. That includes motion controls. Motion controls were bad. It was really bad because it was so pointless and tedious. They added this for walking on a log and for throwing a grenade. I Findra I Findra is a motion comic released as a prequel to Uncharted Drake's Fortune, showing how Nate and Eddie Roger are met. It is released as a four episode comic and was also featured in the Uncharted 2 Game of the Year box. Uncharted 4 E3 Fail In the E3 2015 presentation of Uncharted 4's demo of Chapter 11, after the first cutscene, Nate refused to move in front of an audience. It seems no dog needed to switch to a uh, backup before proceeding. In the release game, Naughty Dog pokes fun at this incident and making it a trophy called Stage 5 by standing at the same location where it failed for 30 seconds. So then when it's time to actually move Nathan Drake through the marketplace, I hit the analog stick, Nathan Drake doesn't move. I'm like, what happened? Nathan, move. I'm like, Nathan's not moving. Why aren't you moving? Now I'm like, camera, the camera's not moving. What's happening? There's a backup monitor over here, and I'm thinking, there's a joystick. I'll pick up that joystick. Now I'm not thinking straight. Time has like gone into some other... Luck. The regenerating health system explained by the developers is Nate's and Chloe's luck regenerating. So, Nate is not getting shot. It's just his luck running out. That's a really smart way for explaining the regeneration of health, at least in my opinion. Now let's move on to Tier 3, Encountering. References in other games. Let's run through the uncharted easter eggs from other games, starting with Lara Croft, Temple of Osiris, where a skeleton remain resembles the clothes need wear in Uncharted 3 by exception. In Tom Clancy's The Division, there's a certain Nate Dragon who is a museum thief. But how Nate Dragon looks is the reference part, because he looks a lot like Nathan Drake.
In Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy, the scene including Nate and Lorena playing Crash Bandicoot in Uncharted 4 is featured on Coco's laptop in Crash Bandicoot 2 starting. There's also a framed photo of Nathan Drake in Crash Bandicoot 3 in the starting. In the last verse, there's a Nathan Drake soft toy in one of the rooms after meeting Sam and Henry. And not to mention, there's also a soft toy of Jack and Daxter there too. There's an Uncharted board game in the same chapter and a newspaper announcing Uncharted movie. There is also a very identical bar from Uncharted 3 present in Last of Us, but has been renamed to Sullivan's Bar. Let's continue on with Last of Us Left Behind. There is a Nathan Drake costume in the flashback, Wall Rats. In the Last of Us Part 2, there is a fat and a slim PS3 with Uncharted 2 and Uncharted Drake's Fortune in Ellie's home and Eugene's things in the basement. There is a Sigporus Magna ring or the engraved ring in the bank. Cool. And the same costume from Last Was Left Behind can be seen in one of the shops in the Seattle map. In Astro's Playroom, there is a certain bot climbing a wall with marking all over. This is obviously a reference to Uncharted. There is also a PS3 disc to be collected called Botcharted and the box art is a complete rip-off of Uncharted 2's box art. There are three trophies mocking Uncharted which are no 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 which is a phrase which Nate uses a lot while falling. Charted which is a trophy for completing the story in the Uncharted games and Dude Raider which I already mentioned in tier 2. In the short-lived PS home, there are two rooms which are Uncharted themed. These include the Shangri-La Hotel from Uncharted 2 and Sully's Bar. There is also a mini-game featured, uh, which is a complete rip-off of Uncharted 3. Maybe I think Sony did it to hype up the game even more. And there is also an unlockable Nathan Drake costume too. In Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, the Rhino 8 spawns Sully's plane from Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the Red Hog from Uncharted 4 Thief's End, and the Purba Dragger from Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. These all items were either crashed, destroyed, or never seen, so it makes sense for them to come here. There is a small easter egg by collecting all the artifacts in God of War 3, giving you the trophy. No Drake, you can't have these. Finally, in Infamous 2, the theorists are playing Uncharted Love, which is an easter egg to the series. And if you think this is a reach, there are other movies also featured here, called Solid Serpent, Assassin's Need, and my favorite, Latchet and Skank. Easter eggs. In Uncharted Drake's Fortune, there's a Hogwild logo or sticker on Sally's plane. In the cutscene right after Chapter 1, this is a reference to Crash Bandicoot's level where you ride a hog. As I already said, there is a precursor orb or egg from the Jack series too. In the 8th chapter, the jet ski has a logo which is the sunset logo featured on Ellie's shirt. In The Last of Us, maybe Naughty Dog went to the future. Otsell, the fictitious company which made Nate's and Elena's websuits, is a reference to Daxter in the Jack series who was a combination of an order and a weasel. In Uncharted 2, in Chapter 1, there is a blackboard with Greek writing in the background of the beach bar flashback, which I'm not going to be translating, but it's given on the screen, which compares Nate's sufferings which he'll endure in his adventures with Odysseus. In Chapter 2, there's a Naughty Dog poem arc 
on a stack grid in the museum. There's an El Dorado Hotel, Club Roger and Sullivan Travels, all given as ads on billboards in Chapter 5, which references the treasure from the first game, the minor antagonist Eddie Roger from the first game, and Victor Sullivan, Nate's mentor. In Uncharted 3 Reception, in Chapter 1, there's a really hard to find plaque which has the words Uncharted Speedrun Champion 2007, Uncharted 2 Speedrun Champion 2009, and Uncharted 3 Speedrun Champion 2011. In Chapter 8, in the very end, there was a sack boy hanging from the truck, which is the character and the protagonist from the LPP series. In Chapter 11, there's a newspaper having a photo of Sully on it. Maybe he's wanted. In Chapter 12, Ramsey's ship is named the Seaboard, which references the TV series Arrested Development, in which the character G.O.B. has the board by the same name. In the Uncharted trilogy, Nate wears different belt buckles, starting with Uncharted Drake's Fortune. He wears a belt buckle with a skull and two swords, which might foreshadow fighting pirates. In Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, the belt buckle featured has a rising sun and a clamshell design, which resembles the Tibetan flag. Uncharted 3 has a belt buckle with a horseshoe, which foreshadows riding horses. In Golden Abyss Chapter 31, while playing on crushing difficulty, it features a blooper behind the scene cutscene where No Not and the team scares Chase's voice actress. That was not funny. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, you didn't stay by You guys! Everybody knew but me! Uncharted 4 features a painting of Guy Brush Threepool, who is the protagonist of the Monkey Island series. There are also references to The Last of Us, which includes The Pendant, the album of Wait for the Kiss being seen in Chapter 11 of Uncharted 4, While Moving in the Market, and The Shambhalas, which was there in The Last of Us as a reference to the lost city of Shambhala in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, is again featured in Uncharted 4 Thieves End. So, which Easter egg is this too? Is it to the last of us or uncharted? In the deep waters of chapter 12, there's a skeleton remain with fungus growing all over it, which is a reference to the clickers in the last of us series. There's a western pharmacy and Elena also mentions her first job in Macho Nacho, which both are there in the Left Behind DLC. And there are also posters of a Last of Us comic called American Daughters and a Savage Starlight comic referencing the comic with a cliffhanger in the Last of Us. Also, not to mention, Cassie is wearing a shirt with an image very similar to the Chinta Morning Stone in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. In Chapter 16, when Nate inspects a magazine, the magazine reads The Treasure of Xeon, which references the treasure which Lara Croft searches for in Tomb Raider 2. And finally, there's a Jack and Daxter board game where young Nate takes cover to escape the nun, which is also featured in The Last of Us. Not only that, some lines even reference the previous games which includes funny idea of romantic, never crossing a bridge again, and well, well, well reference to Uncharted 3 to exception. And the best of all of them, the clown reference from Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. In Uncharted Lost Legacy, there is a skull in Chapter 8, which references the Skeletor in Left Behind. And also, Nadine and Chloe talk about Nathan Drake while driving in Chapter 4. 
In chapter 4, if you climb all the way top of the Hoysala uh, Empire, you'll get Chloe to do yoga. During chapter 7, Chloe says, I can see my house from here, which references a line from Uncharted 4 in chapter 11 and was also featured in chapter 2 in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. I can see my house from here. While exploring in chapter 4, Chloe references to a line said in Uncharted 3 chapter 4 said by Sorry. As a wise old man once said, Abra goddamn cadabra. Well, Abra goddamn cadabra. The useful crates have numbers, which is the release date of the original Jacket Daxter, 3rd of December 2001. Speedrun glitches and tricks. To speedrun a game is to try and beat that same game or part of it as fast as possible, by any means necessary. Ever since the Nathan Drake Collection and Uncharted 4 released, the speedrunning community of the Uncharted franchise has grown more and more, with people joining almost every day with the goal of trying to beat one or more games in the shortest time they can. Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the first entry of the series, is a glitch-heavy game, and that's putting it lightly. We'll be taking a brief look at the two most popular glitches used in the speedrun and how to perform them. Matt Matt, one of the game's oldest glitch hunters, also made a video recently where he showcases all the glitches used throughout the speedrun of the game. Blue will be providing the link to his video in the description of this video for anyone interested. Starting off simple, we have aim clipping. By placing your left shoulder near a wall, aiming parallel to it, and then mashing the aim button while holding the left stick in the direction of the wall, will allow you to clip through it. This glitch is very easy to execute, and can be used in many places throughout the speedrun of the game. The second interesting glitch is called the lounge. Lounges can be performed by rolling into a slope surface and as the animation of the roll is about to end, pressing the inspect button and circle. By doing so, you will be launched forward in the air. This technique can be used to skip huge chunks of the game, with the last major launch being found, saving over 5 minutes over the normal route. Let's continue with Uncharted 2, potentially the most broken game in the whole series. The journal feature allows for multiple different pieces of glitch tech. It isn't active in the first two chapters, but from chapter 3 onwards, we use it at various points throughout the speedrun in order to skip platforming, triggers and encounters. The most basic glitch tech is known as the journal extend. If you walk towards a ledge with a gun in hand and hit the journal button just before going off it, then Nate will keep walking while he puts the gun away. This allows you to levitate for a short distance past the ledge. Now we come to variations of journal extends. If you perform the inputs of a journal extend while Nate is in a stagger animation at the edge, then you can gain or lose height. We call this a book launch and it allows us to reach grips that are normally out of reach. This can be used to skip the whole of the massive fight at the start of chapter 4. as well as in many other spots. The other ma major variation is called zips. These are journal extends which are performed around corners. By moving into the corner, Nate is momentarily stuck, but when his character model moves around the corner, he gets a lot of lateral momentum that launches you sideways around the corner at fast speed. With the current fastest strats, most of chapter 18 can be skipped with both a zip and a downwards book launch following the zip. I think I'm just gonna lose my call, not gonna lie. But wait, that's not the end of the story when it comes to glitches involving the journal. It can be used to trigger airwalks as well. If you're moving and then switch between a pistol and long gun, or vice versa, 
and hit the journal button while Nate is putting the first gun away, then that will softlock Nate indefinitely in an airwalking animation. Once initiated, you can't change Nate's direction of movement, so by itself this only has limited usefulness. Fortunately, there's a way to break out of the softlock state. This is by taking explosive damage, for example from a grenade. So if you hold the grenade button just before hitting journal to start the airwalk, you now have a way to control when the airwalk ends. Oh, shit. Ah. Yeah, that got me a gold as well. In chapter 22, after the first two encounters, we can skip all the way to halfway into chapter 23 with a series of four or five airwalks, most of which being grenade airwalks. One of the coolest things about the glitches in Uncharted 2 is that you can combine different pieces of journal tech together to make great hybrid glitches. For example, Book launches can be combined with regular airwalks in order to perform upwards airwalks that give you height that extends far further than a launch ever could by itself. That was super close. Whoa! Similarly, combining zips with airwalks results in zip airwalks. The current fastest way to skip from chapter 5 all the way to chapter 7 uses a precise grenade zip airwalk, and this saves two minutes over the previous method, which involved a normal grenade airwalk instead. Whoa! Okay, now we just gotta find Chloe. This might work. Okay, cool. That did not look like a good, <laughs> good book launch, but okay. Looks okay, I think. No, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Uncharted that. 2 also has many skips that don't involve the journal at all. One of the most notable cases is Train Skip, which bypasses all of chapters 13 and 14. It relies on a cover shimmy, which works by progressively moving further and further left when turning left and right in low cover. This clips you off of the train entirely and you can watch it riding off while you levitate over the tracks. After about 4 minutes, the train returns to your location, since the tracks are on a big loop. Congrats Skullfish on the raffle victory. Ah oh, nice, we did get it, interesting. And after it hits you, you trigger the cutscene into chapter 15. Other types of clips include backwards cover clips and standing cover clips. These can be used in chapters 9 and 19, respectively. In Uncharted 3 Drake's Reception, there are three major scripts which you use in a run, which are the cover launch, the cover blind fire clip, and the cover back clip. Let's start with the cover launch, which we use a lot in the run. We do this by covering in a lower position, aiming your handgun and moving the L stick forward, and releasing the L1 or L2 and circle together. If done right, you launch to new areas and skipping chapters like in chapter 12 where we skip all of the destroyed ship sections. Cover blind fire clip is unlike cover launch, Nate has to be standing in a higher cover, Nate has to be near a wall. And now blind fire into the wall, move the L stick towards the wall and now when you see the gun clip little bit into the out of bounds region, press O which will make you roll out of bounds. This is used in chapter 22 to skip all the way to the end. Then there is a cover back clip, which is the same as the Uncharted 2. You aim the handgun while in a lower position cover, aim your left stick backwards and press O and L1 or L2 together. 
This will make Nate clip towards the wall and hence out of bounds. In chapter 14, as the ship moves a lot, if you go here, jump and press the photo mode button and zoom out, this will make the world out of bounds, which helps you get to the next part of the chapter faster. And recently, the rolling gizmo has found a way to get to the next chapter with the same skip. Continuing with Golden Abyss for the PS Vita, let's start with the most frequent glitch used in the speedrun, cover clipping. A glitch discovered by Oven Donkey, cover clipping allows you to clip through walls and has two variants, one where you're crouched and one where you're standing. The most notable difference being that a standing cover clip is way faster than a crouch cover clip. So how is it done? For crouch clipping, enter low cover and face the direction you like to clip into. Turn to face the other direction, hold the L trigger to aim and press triangle to switch shoulders. Release L, then turn to the other direction again. Repeating this will cause Nate to shimmy further and further in the direction you were heading towards and eventually through walls. To clip while standing, you just enter cover where Nate is standing, face him the opposite direction you want to go, and spam the aim button. It's literally that easy. What sucks though is cover that is too thin for Nate to move across will stop the glitch from working. What also sucks is that the standing variant of the glitch only works on the Japanese 1.0 version of the game. This is why we use Japanese 1.0 for our speedruns, since it's the fastest version. <laughs> And speaking of speedruns, where are these used in a run? Speedrunner B-Man discovered that in the prologue chapter, you could use this glitch to skip some climbing, but more importantly, skip the trigger for the enemies to spawn. This means you can make your way straight to the end of the chapter, without having to kill anyone. At the beginning of chapter 5, we use a combination of both cover clips. First, after killing this enemy to grab his weapon, we crouch clip to skip enemies ahead and lifting chase onto a higher floor. Then, we run to the closest standing cover to clip out of bounds and essentially make our way around to the end of the chapter. In chapter 7, if you make your way to this fridge in the second room, we can take cover on it, clip through some collision and pretty much bypass the whole chapter up to the elevator. The fridge is a bit finicky however, so it may take a couple of attempts before it starts to work. Chapter 9 also gets broken with this glitch, as you can use a series of cover clips to go through each room, and eventually to the end. The following chapter is completely skipped too. Where you would usually have to escort Chase through a sniper section, you can clip your way down to where Chase is, then find another piece of cover where you simply just spam aim to reach the trigger for the end of the chapter. Halfway through the 15th chapter, just as the first gunfight starts, if we pick up this dragon sniper and make our way back here, we can clip through this wall and with a couple of well placed jumps land on the trigger for the next cutscene, effectively skipping the fight. It's important to pick up the sniper here as clipping through this particular wall doesn't seem to work when using any other weapon. And unfortunately, there is no explanation as to why this is. There are still many other glitches and skips that I haven't even mentioned, like glitching the menu overlay to appear while still playing the game, which allows us to skip a cutscene, or abusing the game's dodgy geometry to climb on certain things to skip big chunks of a chapter. But I thought I'd only touch on what was major. If you're interested, I highly recommend watching B-Man's world record any percent run, which includes most of the skips that I've mentioned here, and more. Chart 4 The Ascent has very less skips and that's the reason why there isn't a glitches category for speedrunning. 
Starting with Super Swim, jump or drop into a body of water. You can do this by standing stationary in water like in Chapter 12. When you jump into the water, hold Circle and X together, which makes you dive in the water. Surface for breathing by using ticks and Nate with Super Swim. We use this in Chapter 18 and Chapter 22. Then there's Cover Skip in Chapter 6. First you get close to the wall by shimming left to right in a specific rhythm. Then you turn towards the wall and hold inspect mode at a certain time to clip inside. Then move your camera inside to be able to drop down and move out of bounds. Now you are out of bounds so you can use photo mode to navigate to the ledge at the end of out of bounds. There drop down to hit the checkpoint. So, uh... By doing all of that you are able to keep the rope by skipping the area where you would normally lose it. Then you use the rope to climb faster than Sam which doesn't trigger the cutscene. You can keep going until reaching the edge where you can then jump to the window and then to the balcony. You can then move to the lower floor to hit the checkpoint. <coughs> Someone's just through there. And in chapter 8 you can skip the shale by meshing circle and X together and moving the left stick forward. In chapter 12 you can progress to a new area faster by going to this location, jumping out of the boat, swimming and diving to the front of the boat, which pushes you to the next area without having to explore. No one ever found this place. Oh. In chapter 16 you can skip moving the bookcase by climbing onto the bookcase, moving right and just when you're about to drop, press X and Nate can progress forward. In chapter 17 you can skip the dam by taking cover at the back of the car after you've parked here. Shaving left and right, then aiming your gun and moving the left stick back. And when Nate is out of bounds, release the aim button, then you skip to the new area. But it's not over yet, as you need the car to progress. Run towards the waterfall and Nate can jump on the waterfall, not sliding, and keep on progressing until the out of bounds regions fully spawn. We start checkpoint, which gives you the car to progress. In chapter 9 you can skip moving the crate by attaching your grappling hook to the crate, then moving to this area, jumping, pressing L1 and mashing X, which makes you reach the next area needed to progress without having to move the crate and wasting more time. In chapter 20 you can skip firing the RPG at the turret by going here and pressing circle and mashing X. This will make Nate progress and after some time Sam and Elena will spawn. Lastly, there's a skip to get to the wooden platform faster. This is done by standing where Sam and Nate would push a wooden plank earlier and when Elena's voice line comes up, jump and grab her as soon as Nate starts moving back. Mesh jump. Then when Sam's line to push the plank comes around, we start checkpoint. Which lets Nate move the elevator across. Four. We're ready. I'm not going to be discussing the Lost Legacy glitches, so I would recommend seeing the runs and videos which I linked in the description, which I've been saying a lot. Sorry. There are reset checkpoints in all the Uncharted games which helps you progress faster. And if you are interested, I would recommend seeing the tutorials of the Uncharted game speedrunning. Sully and Sam Sully and Sam's adventure was the fans' next step for Uncharted 
because it was set up so well for Uncharted 4. But the developers thought different. Sean in the Naughty Dog studio said, So when we started our writing, what was DLC at the time? We had a bunch of storylines. There was a storyline for Sullivan, Sam, Carter, Chloe, and many more. But it was Chloe's we kept coming back to. Why did she choose self-preservation? Why did she always bail out? That really intrigued us. So to tell that story, we soon realized we needed to go back to Chloe's roots with her dad. We knew right away we had a full game when we pitched the story, especially pairing her up with Nadine because she really brought an extra dimension which we needed to tell the story. So, they finally decided against the Sully and Sam story. But funnily enough, Naughty Dog hasn't disagreed making a Sully and Sam story. Mm. Dangerous? Mm. With these people, yeah. It's up there. Well, I just so happen to know a certain someone recently out of prison who might be perfect for this kind of work. Ooh. Cut content, Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4 has had a lot of cut content discovered over the years, starting with the notable crane set piece in the Scotland chapters. Move to the other side so I can jump on! Alright, ready? Yeah, go! Not gonna lie, this is weird! Sam, focus! I'm just saying it's weird! Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they go through with this? Well, this set piece kind of broke the game. So if they release this game with the set piece, there will be a lot of bugs and glitches. But the audio is still intact in the code. The Picton uh, in chapter 13 was supposed to be usable when he shoot bullets onto walls. I seriously don't know why they cut this. But if I had to guess, I think the people at Naughty Dog thought that we would divert from the linear path. There was an unused boat level, which is still in the code. Uh, in Chapter 4, there was a cooking minigames, once in development, where you could mix different uh, ingredients. And even if you make it too spicy, the characters will react to it appropriately. And in the scholar chapter, you could throw snowballs at Sam and he would also return fire, but was cut. You could also play a fetch with Nate's dog, Vicky, in the epilogue, uh, but the animation looked kind of janky. And finally, it seems there was a man a sword fight in the young Nate and young Sam chapter. This is all I could find. If you guys found something more, uh, comment down below. And by the way, the concept scenes and all the videos are provided in the Kempis channel. German Changes So in Uncharted Drake's Fortune and Uncharted Two Among Thieves, they reference Nazis. But as Germany has to censor every part of the media which references Nazis, in Chapter 18, the first cutscene, the Nazi word was changed to they. So the line was, I guess the Nazis forgot to pay their electrical bills and was changed to, I guess they forgot to pay their electrical bills. Guess the Nazis didn't pay their electric bill. Oh, damn it! You know, I bet if we can make it to the generator room, we could get the power turned back on. <laughs> Die haben wohl die Stromrechnung nicht bezahlt. But this change was not only present in Ontario to Fortune, but was also seen in Ontario to Among Thieves. When Lazarevich mentions Nazi when he was saying all the great leaders of the world. But even if this was a compliment towards him, they changed it to Saddam Hussein for Germany. Are you a student of history, Mr. Drake? I've read a book or two. Mm. Genghis Khan, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, they were all great men. Kennst du dich mit Geschichte aus, Drake? It's too fairly eins meiner hobbies. Genghis Khan, Saddam, Stalin, Pol Pot, das waren alles große Männer. Comics. Uncharted is a six issue comic miniseries which was published monthly from November 2011 to April 2012. 
It is an original story written by Joshua Williamson. It shows how Nate met Flynn and Chloe before Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Drake discovers Amber Room, which was hidden by another great explorer, Sir Richard Byard. Richard hid the Amber Room in the fabled Agartha in the Hollow Earth. It's a really good comic series and it's worth your time. Fillion Movie Nathan Fillion, by fans, is the only person who was born to play Nathan Drake in live action. But this fantasy would come true in July 16, 2018, by Alan. This movie is based on the Uncharted series and ever since it was released, it has had widespread love for making the first good video game movie. And fans have made this THE Uncharted movie for them. In my opinion, it's a very good adaptation, but it was too short for me. It shows Nate fighting out of his way when he's taken hostage to then team up with Sully and Elena to find Ferdinand Magellan's lost treasure. And if you know, this is the same treasure the Uncharted 2022 movie is exploring too. Albuquerque. He was rescued by another ship called the Trindage. Portuguese for Trinity. Exactly. Now, history is spotty on who captained it, but there was another ship called the Trinidad, a Spanish flagship, famous for having been the... Fortune Hunter. Fortune Hunter is a mobile game based on the Uncharted series. It's a puzzle game like Lara Croft Go or Hitman Go. It's pretty fun, but it is a bit bland. It just feels like it's going on with a hype of Uncharted 4. And the rewards to complete these objectives in the game are prices in Uncharted 4's multiplayer. Kitty Got Wet This is one of my favorite stories. So in Uncharted 2, 3 and Uncharted 4's multiplayer, we hear Nate say, Ooh, Kitty Got Wet. This originated when Noel North, Nate's voice actor, was playing Wii Sports with his 8-year-old son. And when his son won, he said, Kitty got wet. And Noel North hugged him and then stole from him for the game. I would really recommend seeing the interview on this. UEFA Sony was promoting Uncharted 4 so much that even for the UEFA Champions League, the Champions League had banners and ads for Uncharted 4 Thieves and Now let's move on to Tier 4, Unearth. Sig Paris Magna Translation the actual translation for Sigmar's Magna is so great and small, or so great but small. Cut content on Charlie Drake's Fortune There was a lot of cut content in Charlie Drake's Fortune from the prototype, starting with multiple opponents fighting, improvised weapons like baseball bats, wooden sticks, etc and a lot of changes to Nate's model from his hair, his face, and dressing. Elena was changed from brunette hair to blonde, and the model for a rotten body in the sub in Chapter 3 was also changed too. There was a lot of animation cut, like more vaulting over animations and fighting animations. It looks also like they have a different item hanging from Nate's neck rather than a ring. Some of the music was also cut and some stealth animation was also cut. And finally, some guns and weapons were also cut from the release. No blood. Japanese copy of the trilogy had no blood. Yes, they censored the blood for crying out loud. And funnily enough, this change is still present in the PS4 remastered versions. Naughty Dog and PS3 Naughty Dog didn't know the hardware of the PS3 before making Uncharted Rick's Fortune. Sony only gave them a prototype of the hardware, 
So basically, they have to guess what the system would be able to do. And most times they guess wrong, so they had to cut a lot of stuff. Hence, cut content. Fight for Fortune Fight for Fortune is a card game based on the Uncharted series, but mostly Golden Abyss, because it was created by Sony Ben Studios. But as a PS reader and this game were tremendous fails, both critically and commercially, Sony discontinued this game. Fourth Labyrinth Uncharted The Fourth Labyrinth is the first novel for Uncharted series. It is written by Christopher Golden and he has said that this can be a prequel or a sequel. It's pretty good and I would recommend reading. Know not about movie. The link is in the description for the whole video, but to just summarize, he said that the fans, at least what he has heard, doesn't want an Uncharted movie, and Uncharted itself is a cinematic experience, and the emotional attachment to Nathan Drake as a character, and to just accept somebody else to play him, even himself, is a bit bland. But the worst thing is, now no not is all for the new movie, and even in the retro replay, he was open to think that this wasn't a good idea, the 2022 movie was not a good idea, but now he's fully into it. It's pretty weird. My opinion on all this stuff is, from what I've heard from fans, is they don't want an Uncharted movie, no matter who's the star of it. Uh, Maybe it's because it's such a cinematic experience in itself. Um, I don't know if it's financially feasible uh, for the studios to make this film anymore. Personally, that's just my feeling. SketchUp Uncharted 2's level designs and Shambhala's level designs were all made with a free sketching software called SketchUp. Anath Unearth is a uncharted rip-off game made by Semaphore. It follows Faris Jawad who searches for Ibn Battuta's lost treasure. The main cast is Jawad, Dania and later Rashid who are all similar to some other people. It's an episodic game but the second episode just wouldn't come out and I really hope it doesn't. Critically, it gets a 11 Metacritic score as it's glitchy, buggy, boring, descriptive, and the controls suck. Alternate Chapter Titles I couldn't find all the alternate chapters. I know some of them, so I'm just going to say it. Uncharted 2's train level was going to be called Nates on a Train. The Uncharted 3's plane section was going to be called Nates on a Plane. And there is still some other names which I just can't think of, like for chapter 1 in Uncharted 3. And if you guys know it, just please comment down below. Now let's move on to tier 5, Uncharted. Uncharted 3, Fail. See, when Uncharted 3 was in development, uh, the game would always drain the PS3 memory and in turn making the game unplayable as the details of said water, grass, and sand is just too much. They finished the game two days, two days before full production of the game. Uncharted 2's opening Uncharted 2's opening was going to be DLC for the Uncharted Drake's Fortune, but was cut. The scene was then put into the starting of Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. According to an article, many developers had to work through the night, causing stress, and when they were checking for bugs, this scene had a lot of bugs, and put most work by the developers. And while making this game, 30,000 soda was consumed and one bottle of bourbon. Scene in Lost Legacy Nadine was going to be replaced by Charlie Cutter in The Lost Legacy. But as their arc, and by arc I mean Chloe and Carter, was already been established and known from Uncharted 3, 
they thought to add Nadine, so that their arc from enemies to friends can be fulfilled. Harrison Ford Harrison Ford shot a commercial for Uncharted 3's planes action, and the ad showed him screaming and yelling at the controller saying jump, roll, etc. But sadly enough, this ad was only shown in Japan. Talbot is a cyborg. Talbot is one of the mysterious villains in the Uncharted series, yet he spawns and vanishes out of nowhere. He has a mind control duck which he can initiate when to mind control someone. And many fans have theorized that this was intentional by Naughty Dog. So many fans have said that Talbot is a cyborg, a ghost, or a jinn, which actually makes more sense. Japan's faster copies. Japan's uncharted copies are a bit faster than all the other copies. Damn, Japan gets all the good stuff. Drake's Trail Drake's Trail is a prequel online game to build off the hype of Uncharted Drake's fortune and is used to play with Google Maps. The story follows Elena's private investigator tracking down Nathan Drake. It is accessible on the European Uncharted website, but it's pretty bad, so don't play it. Cameo Naughty Dog was going to have a Nathan Drake cameo for Uncharted Lost Legacy. The cameo is going to happen when Chloe will call Nate on the phone and he is going to play Crash Bandicoot, but was cut because it was so unnecessary of force. Toyota ad. Uncharted 2 featured a Toyota ad which looks more like an Ayafindra ad which shows Nate speeding in the Toyota vehicle, getting away from another car and then cuts to Nate having a treasure on his back and climbing a rope which is attached to a Toyota car driven by Elena and then the enemy's mouths drop when they see the car. Coca-Cola Adventures This is somewhat of a sequel to PS Battle Royale but it's a temple run ripoff and you call that Coca-Cola. <laughs> and you can play as Nathan Drake in his pursuit and you can collect coins, but it came to iOS only and then got removed. Black Flag In one of the Uncharted 4 trailers, the painting which Nate has in his living room was the island from Black Flag. With this came controversy and Naughty Dog had to change it. So that's it. Uncharted redefined gaming. And just people don't give it credit. Without this, there wouldn't be Last of Us, there wouldn't be God of War, and basically all the PS4 exclusives. And the Tomb Raider reboot, too. If you don't think these shouldn't be called games, then why were these called games in 2007, 2009, 2011, and 2016? But if you have the opposing opinion, it's fine by me. But if you guys stay till the end, I really appreciate it. My voice is literally dying over here. And this video will take a lot of time to make. And the script took like three months to write. This is the most ambitious video I made. And the reason for making it is because I, I didn't see any Uncharted Iceberg video on YouTube. So, yeah. If you liked what you heard about speedrunning, the Discord link is given in the description, and the community is really nice. But if you want to see other people's posts about Uncharted, check out the Reddit page out now. If you can, like, subscribe, and check out this channel. And thanks to everyone who helped me make this video possible by editing and by commentating. Thank you Panzer Deer, Melon, Wildfire, Palma, and Urz, who I linked all YouTube channels and Twitch channels in the description so check them out so this is where i sign off see ya hello uh, buka pintu siapa ini bicara sekarang si alano cepatan buka pintu ah tai 
<laughs> it worked. There he is. Up there. Get on the gun. Oh boy. Capito!